back in late August, I set up a, a corn silk tincture. Um, now, a lot of people asked about the different color of the corn silk. Well, the corn silk is actually the stigma. It's actually the flower part, the female flower part of the corn. It's that beautiful silk, super, super just shiny, and, and you can just feel the moisture in it. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a lot of medicinal properties. A lot of people ask about where do you get your corn silk? And we grow a good portion of the corn that we have here. If not, if I don't have it, um, then we try to support local farms as well to, to get the very best ingredients. But these, this came from our, our farm and our garden. Now we use corn silk, especially for our urinary system. Mm -hmm. It is great if you have uh, bladder infections, kidney stones. Overall, it's a urinary tonic. And what I'm gonna do is I have my jar, I have a Pyrex glass uh, measuring cup, and then I have a metal strainer. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just pour it out. <laughs> this is why we use a bowl. No, oh my gosh. I was going to try to get the paper towel, but so they're way over there. I am not worried about this. This is why we use a metal bowl, and I have a, um, tray. a tray underneath of it because we've learned our lesson. So I'm just going to squeeze the corn silk out as much as possible. I have a little discard uh, bowl here that I will use for um, anything that is left over like this. This goes right into the compost bottle, so mm -hmm. it really doesn't go to much, much waste. But I squeeze out as much juice as possible. It smells like corn. It does. It smells like corn. And if you're not into taking a tincture, you can actually use corn silk. Um, drink the corn silk after you've boiled your, your, corn. your corn. So it, it's not something that you, you have to use a tincture. So I've got my amber colored bottle. Then I have a metal funnel with a little bit of unbleached cheesecloth. And so what I'm going to do this is the part that makes me nervous. If I make a mess, it's going to be okay. Mm. I'm not making a mess. Just careful. Do you know how hard it is to do this on camera and to still focus on what you're trying to do and talk about the medicinal properties of corn and how great it is. You're good, you're splashing. I am. <laughs> Concentrate. Um, so we're pouring all of this through the cheesecloth. And anything that's left over in this bowl, I'll end up just re-pouring it. And so what do you got? What are you pouring? I am pouring off goldenrod. Which if you guys remember that video, that was a lot of fun. Oh, that certainly was. That certainly was. So goldenrod is usable in all parts. We pick this fresh here from the farm. We've made tea with it. We've tinctured some, which we're pouring off right now. I'm going to wash my hands while you're doing that so okay. I can help you. All right. And it's also infusing in oil, and we're going to, we've made some product with it, but not a whole lot. So we're pretty excited for that one to get started. I'm going to use a little bottle, and if I need to... Yeah, that's fine. I'll, uh, I'll add to it. That's a small funnel. But I don't have to go real slow. So right now I'm just pouring it through the cheesecloth. I'm just doing this in processes, and I'm going to try to make sure that I don't overfill the bottle. Now, dosage-wise uh, for corn silk, because a lot of people ask about dosing after you press it out. So this has been sitting for over 30 days. Life happens. Um, but for the corn silk, dosing would be 5 to 10 milliliters uh, up to three times a day. And I believe... Pretty much the same thing. You can do uh, 30 to 60 drops three times a day on tincture. Which is about a dropper full. Right, and yes, exactly, it is about a dropper full. Mine's still dripping away. Um, it kind of takes a little while sometimes to go through. You might have to move it around a little and let that air pocket kind of actually open up. Just about ready to squeeze out, I think. Yep, you're gonna want a glove probably. Yes, yeah. Now, 
one of the big questions that we have um, received is, you know, where do you get started into herbalism? Like, how do you get started? And, and that one, did you make a mess too? See, I told you, it's very hard to not make a mess. And I even told myself, I'm That's not going to okay. over pour. That's okay. Just use that and what I'll end up doing is probably do another bottle. But there's a great organization online that you could easily go check out. Um, and it is uh, actually part of the accreditation process that we're going through to become registered herbalist. Um, but it is the American Herbalist Guild. I'll put that website down below. What's nice about the Herbalist Guild is there's a lot of webinars. There's a lot of seminars. Oh, just a ton of research. It's a community. It and, is. And not only that, but it also has schools in your area that you could put in and look and see specifically you know, what school might be in your area. You could attend whether it's uh, in person or even online. Or even online. Now, me personally, I'm hands-on. Yes. So we were very blessed to be able to have a school uh, not far from us that we attended, which is called the Green Comfort School of Herbal Medicine. And Teresa, she's just an angel. I love Teresa so much. And um, if you guys have kind of followed and listened to some of our books that we ha we we studied through with mm -hmm. um, some of these amazing herbalists, uh, but the one of our favorite books. Oh, Some of our cool. favorite authors, herbalist authors, one of them is Dr. Duke. Oh, and yeah. and Teresa, our our teacher, actually studied under Dr. Mm -hmm. Duke. So there's definitely a special connection there. Oh, it, well, it's, it, yeah. It's almost like you could picture it. You could see it. You can hear him talking. You could hear it. It's, it's, it's a nice way to go if you're an in-person. But if you can do, there's, you get lots of information online. Yeah. It's been wonderful to be able to experience the classroom setting yeah of herbalism though and with that books have also been another main question about mm -hmm. what books do we prefer um i'm gonna show you <clears throat> oh look that some of the flowers are still yellow i know it's so pretty this book is the herbal medicine makers handbook this is by james green this book is kind of nice because it really simplifies a lot of the process about tincture making, about what we're doing. Uh, there's also a nice chart in here that, that offers uh, different alcohol percents for right. your menstruums based off of what plant, what well, herb. I found that part really interesting and very helpful. You know, it's, it's resources. I think that's the biggest key is the resources. So, you know, take advantage of the resources that you have available and that appeal to you if that absolutely so the other thing is is book wise i know that we have a lot of books that are on our amazon storefront i felt like it was easier to put them all up there everything that we at least the ones that we really really like up there but i understand it can kind of be a little intimidating um so beginner wise I'm going to go with my go-to. Yes, I love that handbook, um, but specifically for my area uh, because oh. I like to really understand the plant and foraging is a way that we actually get a lot of plants and a lot of herbs in here. They are essentially we, free. Yeah, and yeah. we're blessed in the areas that we are in because there are so many plants. We may not have everything right here, right next to us but it's not far and you can you could go you know five miles and find different plants that we don't have necessarily here but you have over there so foraging in the proper areas and in good clean safe places you know always a bonus and legally right legally as well right uh, but it is the peterson field guide um, it is mm. great for plant identification. I know I've taken you guys with me and shown you how I use this book, but it is broken down in pictures um, and, and when things are blooming. So it's good for you to truly know the plants that are around you. Now, you've got one. You've got a few. We Well, it's yeah. hard to just yeah, pick. You can't just, it's like they're, you know, it's like picking one kid that's your favorite. You right. can't do that. <laughs> So you have a few. I know that you really like the Prepper's Natural. Yeah. Well, the whole thing, the whole homesteading uh, community mm -hmm. got me thinking. And, and one of the things I was always very um, insistent upon is being able to do, like, first aid. Right. So I did CPR and 
firefighting and EMT and did the whole nine yards for quite a few years. And so obviously seeing this, I was like, oh, this was two points uh, connecting as far as prepper, medicinal, EMT wise. So this book, this is by Kat Ellis and it's Prepper's Natural Medicine. And actually in the apothecary or, or in the yurt apothecary of Teresa's at Green Comfort, that's where I first saw this book. Yeah. And I was just, that was it. It, you know, I had, this was one of the first, I've got to have this book. Yeah. So. The other thing that I would also recommend is, you know, book-wise, going to the library and seeing what's in your mm -hmm. area. Uh, not, obviously, this, my, my field guide book might not be for all different climates, but I do recommend you guys getting a book that is based off of the plants that are in your area. Absolutely. Because those are the plants that you're going to actually need. And, and have available. So you want to know how to use them, whether it's cooking with them or, or setting them up as a tincture. For the corn silk we grew and the goldenrod we harvested yep. right here. You know, and so you want to know and you want to learn based off of what is, is around, if that's the best way to start. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is kind of where my mom and I both agree with the regenerative aspect mm -hmm. of homesteading and, and herbal medicine. To me, it, it's hand in hand. I don't know if I would say that everyone needs to have All this abundance. No. Mm -mm. Um, but if you're starting out for yourself, 100% learn the plants that are in your area because that's the best way to actually familiarize yourself with them and then harvest them. If you're not interested in foraging and you're more interested in growing, there are uh, a few different seed companies. One seed company oh, yeah. I'm kind of working with, and I'll be hopefully announcing that kind of soon on a list of seeds. Um, medicinally, fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. Yes. But uh, another really good source uh, you found. Yes, that was strictly medicinal, and they have a charming, charming, charming little catalog and brochure and descriptions and it, it's a lot of information in a very small little pamphlet yeah and um i just appreciate it so much i know it probably take me about three seconds and i could probably pull it out you probably <laughs> could i'm gonna label this before i forget what i yes, just and did i actually got to do another label so that's all we got Aww, in that little bottle we should but... put that in a little one to go yeah that's what i'm thinking so we're labeling with what we just did, setting that aside, um, the amber colored bottles are basically to prevent sunlight from breaking down uh, the plant matter. So you want, if you took the time to forage or grow or, or purchase and make a tincture, you're going to want the best quality that you possibly can. Correct. So it's always good to uh, keep your, your tinctures in an amber colored bottle. And I've had a few people ask about not using amber colored bottles and just storing in the cabinet. I would imagine that that would be just think, fine. It's right. keeping it away from the sun. So other sources, if you're not interested in foraging or growing your own herbs for your medicinal garden, there are a few different companies mm -hmm. that are ethical. They grow the plant matter in a, a more ethical thought process. And, mm -hmm. and I do, I know you've got a few that you like. I like Frontier. Yeah, Frontier Co-op is wonderful. Great. They yep. have a good selection. And and the other one that we also use is Mountain Rose. And Star West, too. Star West Botanicals. Mm -hmm. Pacific Botanicals, too, has also been one oh, yeah. that I've been looking. Um, and they're a bigger name. These are bigger companies that... This is what they do, and, and they have really good product. Um, I feel like I can trust them if I'm not the one, you know, growing them and foraging for it. Oh, and the quality, the quality that we've received in, in ordering, they have been beautiful. But I would say one thing, not to try to discourage anyone, but be careful because there's a lot that has been advertised mm -hmm. in some areas, and you don't get quite the shelf life on know your sources know right. where you're getting the herb is great from the resources that we named but if you go specific to them you got a greater life right. on the product um, versus an independent reseller I guess would be the the best thing to say and if you're not comfortable with going with the bigger companies and you want to go with a smaller company you know, maybe look at uh, local farms. There's a mm. few local organic farms in our area that they do sell 
uh, actually a pretty decent amount of, of organic, you know, herbs that are just phenomenal. So do look and see what is local to you. Now, I will say when you're purchasing a lot of your, your herbs, um, a lot of them come in pounds. Not everybody needs a full pound. No. So <laughs> <laughs> we've learned because a pound of chamomile is decent, but a pound of lungwort is, <laughs> is like this much. And so I'm like, what am I going to do with all this lungwort? Um, I'm going to use it. We'll figure it out. You can also look and see about your local, um, like a local, we have one in our area. Oh, it's the little nutrition little. store. It's a nutritional. Well, it's a, it's a health food store. Correct. Right. So it's, and it's a great, and it's been here. It's a landmark it in is. this area. It's been here forever. And they have a great little selection of all, I mean, they have, I think it's Frontier that they, they actually have a little wall unit that you could buy, you could buy a teaspoon, you could buy a gram, you, it's, you could buy as much or as little as they have available. And they have a pretty good selection, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie, like, when, before we really did the dive, I would just go in there and buy two ounces of whatever if I needed it, but, yeah. you know, now, obviously, like, we've built our stock up. Um, to a good bit, but don't discredit a lot of your, your little nutritional health food stores that are in your area. Especially if you don't have the space, because trust me, <laughs> I'm finding that herb, if you have chickens, yes. <laughs> it's herb, herb math. math. <laughs> Just, it grows. It does grow. <laughs> uh, but, you know, those are really good ways to kind of get yeah. started into herbalism. And, and, you know, one community, two know your resources, do your research on, on the authors, on a lot of these herbalists. You want to know if they have a record, a history, you know, you want to know where they learned from. Right. Um, and then sources wise. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of really good suppliers out there. Go for the best, you know, go for the best, whether you're growing, foraging or purchasing, you want the best potential, it's going to be the best medicine, or the, no, you can't say that. It's going to offer the best, I can't say that. There's a lot of things that we can't say. Um, but just know that it's going to be the most supportive for, right. for your overall, overall body and overall health. And, you know, in a time more than ever now, I feel that if you can make an investment, make an investment in some books. You know, make mm. an investment in just learning plant identification. I I know that there's a lot of apps on your phone. I know that there's a lot of, of, of website forms of plant identification, but always, you know, always double check your sources. Have a buddy that you're yeah. doing it with, you know, go out, forage. It's one, it's a whole lot more fun to forage with somebody. Yes. You know, versus going on your own, especially if a bear comes running out of the woods and you're like, ah, you know, so, but. It's, can you run faster? Can you run faster? Make sure that the person that you go with can't run faster. I can run faster. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I won't let that happen to you. Fine, feed me to the bear. <laughs> but, you know, they, there's there are a lot more supplies, and I do think that this is going to be a part yeah. two. And I think that we're going to break this down into, you know, just a few right. few items as we go along. And, yes, we knock out. We made a big mess, um, but we knocked out some big stuff on Two. our list. Yep. So, and we have been very busy. Yes, we have been very busy. <laughs> so, very, very busy. And, you know, even if this isn't your thing, but it piques your interest, you know, and if, if you buy packaged teas, you know, from the, from the grocery store... This is what I get a lot of people that say, we'll make a, a tea for pleasure, you know, as far as like just to go to sleep. Yes, there are properties, obviously, that we can look at, but this is really sp specifically mm -hmm. to rest and go to sleep and have a good evening. Well, that same herb from a tea bag versus something, mm -hmm. something fresh... Fresh right. dried. Fresh dried, or in this form, it's you, It's almost... It was. It would be such a waste of money to buy three yeah. tea bags. Yeah. The flavor is just... Yeah. So, even if... It, I'm not discrediting that. 
So even if you drink tea just from a tea bag, which is fine, and you have if you ever have the experience to do that and mm -hmm. taste this, you know, and it's curious to see what your opinion is of that. But you know, I drank celestial seasoning for years, and I love celestial seasoning. And I think that's kind of one of the things that started with me is, well, what's in this tea and why? Why is it in the tea? You know, what is valerian? And that's in sleepy time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what is, why is it extra valerian? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. And this is the thing, you know, it, it's, I hope that it piques your interest and I hope that you guys kind of dive more into it. So definitely look forward to a second part, maybe even a third part to, to this series mm -hmm. of building your own apothecary. And um, yeah, as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And learn something old. Bye guys. Bye.